Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have got a exciting journey ahead for all you developer out there. We'll be delving into the fascinating world of Spring Boot and exploring some powerful concepts like auto configuration, Spring static content, reading raw response on a web page and delving into the heart of the Spring MVC. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting out, this video is packed with the valuable insight so let's jump right in. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and cumbrous science education. In Spring Boot, auto configuration is a powerful feature that simplifies the setup and configuration of your application. It automatically configures various beans, components, and settings based on dependency you included in your project. So, in world of Spring Boot, auto conversion is like having a skilled chef named Spring in your kitchen. When you decide to make a new dish, Spring instantly knows what ingredients, tools and techniques to be used. It selects the right component, sets up the perfect environment and arranges everything correctly. So, you don't have to micromanage each details. This culinary expert streamlines the process, saving you time, ensuring your project is well prepared and ready to go. Then what is auto configuration? Auto configuration is a mechanism that analyzes the cluster and the dependency in your Spring Boot application and automatically configures beams and settings for you. It aims to provide sensible default and make it easy to get started with Spring Boot project. So let's see how auto configuration works. Spring Boot includes a collection of starter dependency, which are essentially prepackaged sets of common libraries and configuration for specific use case, just like web application and data access. When you include a starter dependency in your project, Spring Boot auto configuration mechanism kicks in. Auto configuration classes provides by Spring Boot examine your project class path and decide how to configure various components based on presence of certain classes, libraries and properties. You can also define your custom auto configuration classes to further customize your application behavior. Then what are the benefits of auto configuration? First, it simplifies configuration. You don't need to manually configure many common settings. Spring Boot does it for you. Second, reduce boilerplate code. You can focus on writing application logic rather than extensive configuration. Third, ensure consistency. Auto configuration helps maintain consistent configuration across different Spring Boot projects. So now you know why and what and how does it work auto configuration in Spring Boot. We we'll see that in example. Before giving you some example, I would like to start with uh, this topic as well. So when I give you example. We will stay on the Eclipse screen. Moving forward, we will create a application, web application. So, in Spring, we follow a certain pattern. So, pattern means it's not like simple pattern where you have to match something. It is pattern or design pattern. If you ever heard design pattern or not, design pattern means a reusable and proven solution to a commonly occurring design problem in software development helping to promote best practices and maintainable code. Some common design patterns in software development are singleton patterns, which ensure that the class has only one instance and provides a global point of access to the instance, such as database connection or configuration manager. So second can be factory method pattern, which defines the interface for creating an object but allows subclasses to alter the type of object that will be created. Third could be observer pattern, which defines a one to many dependency between object so that when one object changes state, all its dependency are notified and updated automatically, such as in distributed event handling system. So in this Spring Boot, we are going to follow Spring MVC pattern. So what is MVC pattern? Model View Controller, which it implements all the basic feature of Core Springs framework like inversion of control, dependency injection. So these are the two factors. That's why we use this MVC control. 
we have a basic idea of inversion of control of a dependency injection, but we have not added that as in the design part. So this MVC will help us to creating your application. Static contains refers to files that doesn't change dynamically. This includes HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, and more. In Spring Boot project, you can place your static content in a specific directory. By default, Spring Boot looks for static content in the source main resource static folder. For instance, if you place an index.html file in the static folder, Spring Boot will serve it as a static content. But what if you want to customize the configuration? You can configure static content settings in application.property or application.yaml file. For example, you can change the default location of static content or set cache control header for better performance. Spring Boot also makes it easy to integrate dynamic content with static resources. You can use time leaf template to mix dynamic and static content seamlessly. Lastly, remember to consider security when serving static content. Ensure that you secure your static resource properly to prevent unauthorized access. So you can see this Spring Initializer, you can go and visit this. Why we are doing? Because to create a project structure, we will use the lowest one. An artifact, you can just say MVC Spring Web using MVC Design Pattern. I'm just adding some description. Take this 8. I have 11 version right now. So... Let me check. Okay. I see. Now it has the 1.8 version. So more two, three things we have to add. First, we have to add dev tool, right? And I want to add time leaf as well. So time leaf. This two will work for now. Let's generate. Now I have moved that file folder to my let me come back to Eclipse and file and do import and for search for archive file. Search that uh, zip file which should be present in your this one. You can see right all is there. So let me also check the spring. Yeah, this should be there. Oh, let's look at it. So you can see this MVC application, right? As I was explaining. Spring Boot application, whenever you add, it uh, automatically configures your dependency. First, what it does is, it will check your all dependency. Under this dependency tag, you have to check what are the dependency. This is the dependency we have added. It will start checking if I have that in my dependency. This is the dependency package. It will check if I have that uh, jar file, that library file here. If not, then it will start downloading that. that. Okay. The Maven will help us to download. Then we have more the dev tool. Whatever dev tool you have, you can put. So these uh, two are optional. Okay. So if you if you have added, that means that this uh, after downloading that, it will configure additional things. So first, it will try to configure your. It means it will try to add that in your Maven package. Okay. So Spring DevTools must be here. See, you can see this DevTools. This has been added. And on top of that, it will start adding those additional configuration. This is scope means this. Whenever you start your application, it should be uh, the scope will be run runtime. And optional is true. If you want to stop this, you can also stop by changing the optional part. Let's come back to this class. We will create a simple uh, web application. So first I will create a controller. Okay. So MVC pattern follows a controller and model view controller. So controller where you create your request. Okay. Then we are going to create some REST APIs. I will write controller and also tell this is a REST controller. Or you can just play say component one. It also works. Controller is also a component base one now under this we will create uh, some method method would be read message read message 
and what read message will do it will return ring application is running i will send this message so where i'm going to send i have to change the uh, return statement as well this is going to be public and this return statement i have to pass that in our ui in order to pass that, I have to tell this is not simple method. This is a request method. I will add one annotation called mapping, get mapping. What kind of mapping you have? Okay, I guess for adding get mapping, you have to add some few more dependency. So what I did is I want to add the spring web. It is part of this. So I just added this group ID and active fact ID. I will save this so that I should get those dependency whatever I want to create this will help me to add this get map okay so I was trying to get this get mapping I was not able to now I have this is under this stereotype uh, swing web this also coming by web jar it will create a request same name I just put that you can write you have to add the path this is the path this is the read message adding a, a hyphen or you can just remove hyphen as well that's also fine that's it okay let's see that is that works or not first i need to build this uh, right click on this application go run as and do maven build it has started building your application it means that this is successful this in the first time it has been successful because of the right package and the right version we have picked okay so this let's go to next in order to start you have to always go with the main this is the main go right click on that and say run as java application okay not the server server is, is it inbuilt part of spring boot just need to start your application with your java this wherever you have a main okay and wherever you have written spring boot so my application is running you can see in the console what console reads it started in my application on this and there are no active profile that's fine we have root application initialized this map web application context has been initialized why because we have added our dependency web spring web okay we have also added live reload right which is running on this port my application is running on 8080 so this whole server is actually running on 8080 so if you go to your browser and run this to localhost 8080 dot colon right you have to write the same exact word so this is a default page and this is also been created by auto configuration there's a class help us to create this error page so this is also part of auto configuration there are other things we will see eventually as you can see this we are having some error because we are triggering the main page but this doesn't have any template template or any page we have not created that's why it has triggered or it has created a default page and this http resource handler will will try to figure out if you have any page or not where you will found that page there will be one more directories under this resource which will have a static content okay public static that will also be there but right now it is not been part because what i have did is we have added manually the dependency so manually will not add those directory in order to add that uh, you can again add this dependency and generate new project both have same name better i would change the name of it you have that web there then eventually we'll get this static template or if you don't get that directory you also can add that here so that is how the directory has to be under this static or the template one so this mvc having the static and template and we have the control as well i need to first build this as you can see in that down we have successfully build this application now you just can run this right click on the main class do java run 
it will start running on your this directory so 8080 this means that aptek is just running just copy it and paste it to your address bar and hit enter what you will come across is a white label error page which is the default error page generated by spring framework why did this happen well it's because we use component instead of rest control but no worries uh, we'll make the necessary tweaks and the application will automatically rebuild with live reload now if you will revisit that url you will be greeted with the message that says spring application is up and running just so you know in this scenario the get mapping handles the request and the returns statement serves as response and remember it's not just about the using string you can get creative and return objects or classes too so let's see some few more examples under this i want to create some message instead of writing just simple like this what if i want to send a full class okay so i am going to create some json as well so i am going to create a class called json or uh, let's let's take a real example say person okay under so whatever you write any class it has to be under this package it cannot be out of or under this okay because you have this main controller this is under this package in spring the base package plays a crucial role in component scanning and beam creation when you create a class and store them in other packages the base package you define helps spring identify and scan those packages for classes annotated with spring annotation such as component service repository and control this is important for spring to create and manage pins and component effectively for instance uh, if your base package is spring.core.mvc here you can create a class in spring.core.mvc dot controllers spring will automatically scan and manage it however if you place a class in a package like spring.core here spring won't recognize it unless you specifically configure additional base package or component scan settings here let's say i have some few attribute name and it is going to be string private you have age of course patient this also say that this is a string right string will work or what if this person this is a male or female you can add i will use cas or characters this is these are uh, wrapper class i will always use wrapper class instead of primitive because with uh, mvc pattern it is required to use wrapper class whatsoever you you have it's not always you can stick on this but uh, it is recommended the characters will say gender now i will create get a setter go to right click and go to source and generate get a setter you will see all the required properties this will create your get a setter one more thing i need to add is constructor okay you can also create constructor and this constructor will help me to add these initialize this value and the change for this let's say a uh, salary I want some more float or double value as well. I have to change this everywhere wherever I have occupation. One more thing I want to add is I want to override two string. Why we are overriding? Whenever I want to keep the display instead of right creating a method, I can just create two string override this two string. What I did is I control space and find that correct. one so this is the full code i will add few more line like 
person sending the name value will set person detail h going to check the I will send these details whenever I want to get the person's detail. Okay. So, this is done. Now, I want to, so I will create a method or the API which will call this get person detail. Okay. This is this method I have created. First, I need a get mapping. There can be two mapping, it can be a get mapping or post mapping both works I will for now I will just use get mapping how you want to access this I will use the same method okay to get the details or I I can use my own personal way sometimes we have seen in URL how it is represented say person hyphen details this add hyphen to sell that we don't write this message always. Okay. This is for your understanding. So always try to add like this. This will be the visible to the URL. Now I want to return something. What I want to return? I want to return person data. So let's say new person data. I have created constructor. So first is the name Shilpa and age. Where age would be 25. Then we have gender, let's say M, should be in uh, character, right? M, I say, and the salary. If she get 30,000, okay, and it has to be double, you add uh, something or change the return statement as also, because we are sending as a person, as a detail, okay? So this is done. So what if, if I visit this URL? Let's see. My applications built it already. So this is the read message. So if you go to this page, so you will see a this is a JSON constructed. So what happens internally is whenever you create and you want to send a object, it can be any object, it can be your custom object or it can be inbuilt object. So that will always transform your data to JSON mappings. So you get name shilpa age 25 salary and how to read this you can understand by this way or you can just go to a json reader you can add something here so that you will see these are the object name shilpa age salary this is how json will look like this how to read it so this is what we wanted so whenever you want to send some data it will always a json body Okay, let's, let's come to our. So now we have created a simple web application and we are able to send some data also. But still, we are far where we have not created the full sledge of MVC pattern. So we will understand what MVC actually is working here. And in, in simple understanding, what internally it's working. We will understand through code as well through this flow diagram. So we have a web browser. You can it can be any web modern web browser. Whenever you request something, there is a fund controller in your Spring. What is fund controller in Spring and web MVC? When you add that in your as a dependency, there is a dispatcher subject. There is a class which actually works as a front control. So that is the when you add some configuration that is exactly placed in this dispatcher servlet. It is responsible to manage flow of Spring MVC application. So this is very important in terms of interview. If somebody asks you a question, what is fund controller? Then you would talk about dispatcher servlet. What is dispatcher servlet? It's responsible to manage flow of the Spring MVC application. Then you start explaining about the flow of your data. So how data is processed when you request something. So what we are requesting, we are requesting this localhost person data, right? We are requesting this page 
this is one the request when a user request it uh, go to the fund control and it will check do we have the right dependency or right package or everything that will check by the the fund control everything verify then it will check where this url present do we have this url so whenever you create a rest api this with the rest controller it will register each in its registry so rest will have certain index where each path has been added so in that index it will try to find out do we have this person detail there can be one spelling mistake this uh, instead of person details i am just going to detail so that what will happen it will not be find in the rest controller index where person detail is not been registered so that will not eventually it will always go show you default error page if he finds the right one what will happen it will go to the certain controller it will find it will give the front controller in that okay we have that url and this is your control what is the controller this is the controller this rest controller is controller and this is the controller where this is pipe so it doesn't mean that it has to be from this whole uh, page there can be another class also which have rest control and we are adding this api we are creating that also be can be. so that's why it will identify this package it will go to that controller and also tell you which method to trigger so that give you this right method as well. so this is what happens internally it will ask front controller controller that do you have the right request if yes then that controller will give you the method method will like be executed so here in this case it is getting executed what is it getting executed it will go to it will return this person has a constructor it is initializing these value whatever you set it will initialize then it will send the whole in the person this is person you are getting and then the the these are the model model being as a data data the data contains the data of the application data can be single object or collection object so we saw two example it can be a simple message right or it can be whole object as well they can be the, these are the model so this is what is getting flow and at the end it will go to view view is a resolver we have view represent provided information in particular format generally jsp jlc use to create a web view page right now we have not created any view page but uh, if you have not created view page means that it this application doesn't have any html page so at this point it will give you the raw files raw data so what is the raw data this is the raw data so through spring also support other uh, technologies such as apache velocity timely spring also timely we are going to use it we have not used yet so we'll add those and there you have it we have explored auto configuration serving static content reading raw response and spring mvc in spring boot application with these skill you are well equipped to build powerful and interactive web application i suggest taking a look at the upcoming follow up video if you got something out of this video go ahead and smash that like button thanks for hanging out with me i am atindinath and you have been chilling with with science keep coding and stay awesome